Hi, my name is Mike Dillard, and this is Self Made Man, the podcast for men who want to leave their mark on the world and create a legacy of honor, integrity, and achievement in every aspect of their lives. I'm glad you're here, and once again, it is time to forge your destiny. Today, you are going to receive a podcast MBA on how to build a massive membership-based business from my very good friend, Mr. Justin Tupper. Now, about eight years ago, Justin decided to turn his passion for golf into an online business, uh, really in the same fashion that I did almost 10 years ago. Well, today, Revolution Golf is the largest instructional golf website in the world, and at the heart of their business model is a monthly or annual membership. Now, membership-based businesses are some of the most valuable in the world because they produce predictable recurring revenue, and really foster a captive and active customer base. And for that reason, they can be valued with a multiple of up to 10x earnings. So that means a membership-based business that's doing about a million dollars a year in profit can be worth up to $10 million. Well, Justin has mastered this process. Now, he doesn't want me to reveal the exact number of active members they have, but I can tell you this, it's huge, and it produces well over eight figures per year in revenue. And today, he is going to give you their secret sauce and tell you exactly how it is done. And I'll say this right off the bat, the way they acquire their members was new to me. It was not what I thought or expected, but it clearly works. We're going to talk about pricing, we're going to talk about marketing, and even how to compensate experts who produce content for your members. And he's also going to give you the name of an extremely valuable company that specializes in monthly membership billings for companies like Angie's List, the BBC, the Dollar Shave Club, LifeLock, and LegalZoom. This is without a doubt one of the most valuable episodes we've ever produced here at Self Made Man, so please get ready to take some notes and help me welcome Justin Tupper. Welcome back, everybody. Mike Dillard here, and I am very excited to introduce you guys to a longtime friend of mine. Gosh, it's probably been about 10 years now, Mr. Justin Tupper from Revolution Golf. So, Justin, welcome to the show, man. Thanks, Mike. It sure has been 10 years. Dude, time flies. Yeah, absolutely. So you and I have had a a chance to catch up over the last couple of weeks. I've been uh, studying your business. And as you and I have had an opportunity to chat, man, what you've built over the last, you know, close to a decade now with revolutions just turned into something absolutely amazing. So I'm super excited that uh, you're joining us here today. And we're going to be talking about, you know, really one thing specifically, which is how to build a massive continuity slash membership based business, and your numbers with what you've done with Revolution Revolution are amazing. Uh, but before we jump into that, why don't we give people a little bit of an idea about your story and your background and where you came from and, and how you started this business? Absolutely, and uh, great to be on here with you. You know, and in all honestly, if I was talking to anybody other podcast and someone were saying who were some really uh, early mentors of yours, Justin. Mike Dillard would absolutely be one. So it's a pleasure to be able to speak to your audience because I, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. And I often actually, when I do tell my story, there's guys like you and Yannick Silver and, and a few others that were incredible resources and incredible friends and people that I really looked up to and helped me motivate me uh, to do this. And it's, so it's super fun to be able to talk oh, to you. Awesome. About this. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. Absolutely. So. Yeah, I'll take you back a little bit to start you with my story. And the, sort of the beginning of it sounds much like a movie that was uh, released two years ago. And that movie was called The Big Short. And uh, with that, I'll sort of tell you. And I've been telling this story way before that movie. But so 2000, sort of three to 2000, early 2008, I was in the real estate business in South Carolina on the coast. And at that time, it was very much pre bubble. You know, we were in a very different world as far as lending went and everything like that. And I was using video. I was a, I went to University of South Carolina and was a media arts major. And I was using video very heavily in my real estate business. And YouTube, you know, was out around 2006 or so. And I started posting videos on there about about properties and, and doing some really interesting stuff. Uh, and it led to a really great residential real estate business. And in 2008, this is where the big short part of this comes in. I literally went to a closing and a, a family who had a combined income of about 200, um, excuse me, $145,000. 
they were buying a home that was on the marsh or, or the waterway in South Carolina for $645,000 with no money down. And they had an appraisal that was actually for 700 and something thousand dollars. Can't remember the exact amount, but they were getting a check back at closing and they were taking that check and they were going directly to Best Buy to buy LCD and plasma TVs. Hmm. And I literally walked out of that closing, went to my dad. My dad is a, a judge, has been in, in South Carolina for 37 years, went right to his office, sat down with him and I said, dad, this ain't going to work. Like this is, there, this is just the, is, this is going to be a big case of musical chairs. The music's going to stop. There's going to be way too many people and not enough chairs. And literally no economist never studied, you know, that kind of stuff. It just didn't feel right. And so I had done pretty well, had some savings together. And, uh, my dad looked at me and he said, let me tell you something. There are very few times in your life where you have the opportunity to go do something that you really want to do. And like, now is your time. And with that, you know, I said, you know, what is it that I, I asked myself internally, what is it that I really want to do? What, what would be like life by design for me at that point? And, you know, there are guys like Tim Ferriss who had the book, the four hour work week that I'm sure a lot of your listeners have read. And, and you know, that was sort of really heavily on my mind. It's like, how could I do something that I really, really love? And, you know, my big passion, I really love the game of golf. It has been a wonderful game to me throughout my life. I've met so many people and learned so many valuable life lessons from it. And I just love being outside and with friends and it's an interesting business. And so that was the thing that I really understood more than anything. And when I mean understand it, I really understand the psychological triggers in the passionate golfer because I'm one of them. And they are, you know, they make irrational spending decisions about the th about the sport because they love it so much. So I started to think, you know, how can I make a living at golf? I was always a good golfer, never had any interest in being a pro. I wasn't good enough to be a tour player. And, you know, always wondered how could you get into the golf business and really have a business that had no ceiling on it? You know, if you're a teaching pro, for the most part, you're going to make X amount of money or are you really going to build a, a real business that way? And being a lifelong entrepreneur, that was never really something that really made me excited. And so it was at that time that I literally said, all right, video is going to be big on the web. Like there was no telling. And I, and I you know, this is a, another conversation, but I still believe we're in the infancy of video on the web. I think it's it's still a very early time, even though there's massive companies out there like Netflix and Hulu, and you know we're seeing traditional companies like HBO and Showtime and and people streaming. I still think it's at the very infancy, and so it was that time I said, you know what, I'm just gonna I'm gonna take my I'm gonna get out of the real estate business, and I'm gonna get into at the time the information marketing business, and that's when I literally, you know, started to really connect with with you and Yannick and other people and uh, said, how do I build a business online in the information space about golf? And to be completely honest, uh, Yannick, when I first told him this, he was like, man, you know, golf's a tough one. Like there's a couple guys that have done all right out there, but it's really, you know, not a, there's not a huge amount of opportunity comparatively. And I, and I just thought, you know, I think there is like, I know who these guys are and I know, you know, the size of the market globally and the, the really the wallet spend, the share of wallet that these folks have. So, yeah, there's only 20 million odd number of golfers in the United States, but that share of wallet is really big in those people. And how can I get to them? And so it was at that time I started, I really, you know, to use a, a, you know, a line that has always stuck with me that Frank Kern says, I just suspended all of my sort of disbelief. And I said, I'm going to go do this. I'm going to give it a try. And you know what? The worst thing that's going to happen is, you know, I'm going to learn a lot more golf. I'm going to spend some time with it. And, you know, it'll be a great experience and let's see what I can do. And so it was at that time that uh, I really just decided to dive head first in and, and give it a good go. And, uh, you know, when I started, I literally filmed, uh, I had a buddy whose dad was a pro at the time and I 
took my camera and filmed a bunch of videos and, and made some DVDs and started a WordPress blog. And it was extremely basic. But that was also a time when Google AdWords was sort of at its very beginning. And what, what year was this? When, when did you launch Revolution? Yeah, so Revolution Golf uh, really started in 2011. I had just a regular sort of blog in 2000, late 2008 it started. I made my first sale of a DVD on February 16th, 2009. Mm. You know, I started just sending Google AdWords traffic to it and... That's back when the golf keywords were 10 cents a word. Now they're, you know, a dollar ten, dollar twenty a word, but it was different and started selling DVDs literally, you know, it sounds like an infomercial, but literally out of my house in South Carolina, I had a guest room and I made an order of a bunch of DVDs and I stacked them up there with some boxes and, you know, started selling selling DVDs online. And I'll never forget February 16th, I sold my first one. I sold like one DVD that day. The next day I sold three. The next day I sold zero. And I was like, hmm. But, you know, it started to grow and grow and grow. And I would literally, to give you an idea of that growth, in 2009, out of my you know house in South Carolina, I sold about two and a half million dollars worth of DVDs. And that was, I was customer service, accounting, shipping, everything in one. I would. <laughs> sounds like I, sounds like my first. Business. Exactly. It, no, yeah. it's you know it, it sounds like it because it was influenced a lot by by you. But I would literally, I would literally you know spend four or five thousand dollars on my American Express with Google. At twelve oh one, the merchant processor would dump the money into my bank account. At twelve oh two, I would pay my American Express bill every single night. And then the next morning, I would wake up and I would pack those boxes and the UPS guy would come by the next day and we'd ship them out and we'd just sort of, you know, I'd just sort of see where that would go. And that led me into 2010. In the winter of 2009, I made some more DVDs. And actually, at that time, that's when I was like, man, you know, this DVD thing is like expensive, you know, because you had to buy the DVDs and yeah, I sold them, but there was still like cash flow that came into to consideration with all that. And I thought to myself, I wonder if people will buy the same content in a streaming form. And so I did that. And lo and behold, not only did they, but sales conversion numbers went up. And so in March 2010, I had my first $1 million month selling just golf information streaming over the internet. And it was at that time that I took a real hard look at this and said, you know what, there's a real big business here. And I think I might have sort of lightning in a bottle. So what do I need to do to really take this on head on? And so I really looked you know, so sort of internally to myself and said, what is it going to take? And, and I decided in on April 21st, 2010, to pack up my stuff into three suitcases and my golf clubs and move to New York City. And the reason there was I wanted to put myself in the, in a really different place. I wanted to, not, I love my friends at home. I love the distractions at home, like the golf course that was across the street. But I said to myself, you know, to really grow this thing, I think I need to be in a place like New York where there's inspiration everywhere, where I'm solely focused on the business and where I can potentially meet people who are in the media business who have finance backgrounds. I wasn't, wasn't looking to raise any capital for the business at that time. But I was just like, I want to be where people are and where people in the media business are. And I moved to New York City with literally no plan. So much of no plan that I moved into a hotel for two weeks before I found a apartment in, in New York. And uh, you know that year, that business, the business uh, continued to grow. And at the end of 2010 is when Revolution Golf was born. I, I had a story then. I mean, I went from, you know, t over 2 million in sales in 09 to over 10 million in sales in 2010. And, and that's when I said, all right, you know, my sort of the business that I want to see, it was birth Revolution Golf. And it was, it was interesting. A guy named John Reese, who a lot of you folks, listeners may know of, was in New York City at the time. He actually, we spent a lot of time together. And it was during that time, John was called me one morning. He's like, dude, 
been thinking about the business that, you know, we were, we'd go to coffee and we'd have meals together all the time in New York City. He was living in Soho and learned a lot from Reese. And, um, he's like, there's a domain out there. I just found it for you. It's called Revolution Golf. It's 300 bucks. He's like, you should buy it. I was wow. like, you know, I was like, yep, I'm going to buy it. So I literally bought it because I had this idea. I wanted to get more, I wanted to build a business. That was about a platform called Revolution Golf instead of any single person, instructor. And I wanted Revolution Golf to then have a faculty of the best golf instructors in the world. And I wanted to be all about golf instruction, golf travel, golf equipment, and golf training aids. Because those are the four things that a really passionate, passionate golfer are into. And yes, they're into, you know, the professional tour and things like that, but there are lots of websites out there that can tell people about the leaderboard or the gossip that's going on on the pro tours or that kind of stuff. And there's lots of different companies that do that from golf, you know, golf digest is a traditional magazine that's making a shift to digital, you know, and other people that are sort of talking about the, I would call golf news. And what I wanted to do is get at the core of that guy. And at the same time, it was really Reese who was telling me at the time, man, let me tell you, you know, you need to, you should look at building a business that is continuity subscription based that you can really build. And then you can also sell product through it and so on and so forth. So, you know, there's a bunch of guys out here there who I, who I thank to really help and guide me along. Uh, as mentioned, you and, and Yannick are too, but, uh, John. Reese was another one that really helped form it. And actually, uh, never forget, we were at a little sandwich place in the West Village called Lenny's where we'd meet from time to time to grab a sandwich. And he was that morning, he was like, dude, I found this you know, domain name you should buy. And wow. it was a $300 purchase that has literally led to a business that has you know, sold well, oof, a lot of Well, that's what I was stuff. actually just going to ask you. I was going to say, yeah. take us to where you are today, whatever, whatever numbers you'd like to share, number of numbers, sure. you know, and then... Let's go back and I'm going to start picking your brain as far as, you know, tactically some of the things that you've done to get there. Yeah. Well, where we are today is we have, you know, a free subscriber list of, of people well over two and a half million. And I have had, you know, we've driven about close to four million email, you know, subscription uh, people to become subscribers of Revolution Golf. When I say 4 million, that's unpaid subscribers. But we have an active list of, of well over 2 million now and you know tens of thousands of continuity members that we grow that by leaps and bounds every single month. So that's a big part of the business. And we've sold well over, you know, got to, you know, it's it's oh, it's got to be getting close to 100 million dollars worth of golf information products, things like that in the last four, four years or so. Mm. So it's, it's been a big business, but really the part of it that I look at now, the things that get me excited is how do you build what I call a media company now? And I, and by that is a big amount of subscribers that are paying you. And actually at Revolution Golf, we are majority well, the big part of the majority are yearly subscriptions. And so how do we build these yearly subscribers? How do we build the perks? What do we need to do to attract those people to become that? Because at the end of the day, and you and I have had this little bit of a talk about how do you build something that is a media company that is not really built around any one person, right? That's really built around a platform. So you can you know, add pros, pull pros out from time to time outside of that. And when I say pros, I mean the faculty of instructors that are at Revolution Golf. And to me, that is what is exciting. And that's what a real business is, is when you can build something that's not dependent on one single person. And that's what we've really been focused on the last three, three and a half years at Revolution Golf. Yeah. So to sum it up real quick, the 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 primary core of your business, the driver, the number that you're looking to increase every single day is the number of annual members that you have to the service, which is how much per year? Yeah, so we have different price structures, but you know the main one is ninety seven dollars per year. And what I say is we have a couple different price structures, but the main one is ninety seven dollars a year. That's what I'm looking to drive. And here's what's really interesting about that. 
when I look at our business day to day, I look at it in three groups of people. So we have our RG Plus subscribers. That's our paid continuity membership program. And those people are, they open our email, for instance, at a rate that is mind boggling. I mean, our emails that go to our RG Plus members, it is not uncommon to get a 70 to 80% open rate. And mm. a lot of people are like, no, that's crazy. Like, I hardly open my mother's emails at that kind of rate, right? But that's how good these people are. It's like when you get somebody to pay into a subscription, they do, they interact and they engage in such a higher level. I mean, they, they buy more from you. They watch more of your video. If that's your content is, they're just, they're worth literally 20 or 30 times more than any other sort of person. And then the next group of people are customers. And what I mean by customers is these people might not buy a subscription, but they will buy streaming video. Like if we come out with a video program, they will buy golf clubs. And because, and you can't leave these people out because in a business, even when you're building a subscription business, there's only so many people that are going to buy into a yearly or monthly or whatever first subscription. Because people just, some people just don't like that you know, reoccurring bill on their credit card for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean they're not good customers. It doesn't mean that they won't buy well more than the subscription fee for the year. I mean, I have, I literally have tens of thousands of people, you know, over a hundred thousand people actually that will not pay to be a subscriber, but they average spending with me far more than $97 a year. So it's not like that they're, you know, there's something I should not pay attention to. I should not cater to. We should not be focused on. But for whatever reason, they're just not interested in subscription, but that doesn't mean they're not going to be spending money. And then the other allotment of people is at Revolution Golf, we have something that we look at called hyper-engaged. And our hyper-engaged people are people on our email list that some, they could either, they could be Revolution Golf Plus members. So they could be paid subscribers. They could be customers of some form, but we have about 800,000 people that I call hyper-engaged. And those people, are, we're very uh, calculated on how we measure them. And what I mean by that is they make at least three actions with us per month, every single month. So they, our open rates on those folks are 35 to 50%. They are, they're engaging in our content. Maybe they're not buying. Some of them are. Some of them are becoming subscribers, but they're watching our videos. They're engaging in our emails and they're worth a lot to a company like mine because there are certain opportunities in our business that there are, you know, video numbers that we need to hit. For instance, if we have a major advertiser in the golf space, they want us to run their video and stuff like that. We can get hundreds of thousands of views in a day. And that comes from sort of those hyper engaged people, a lot of them. So let me let me dive into some detailed questions here. You know, when mm -hmm. I when I see these ninety seven dollar a year, you know, membership businesses, these are becoming more popular and they're some of the biggest out there. And the first one that I think of that's been doing this for the longest as uh, Stansbury Research and Agora. You know, yep. the financial side, these are Stansbury alone, just $300 million a year in revenue. And their entry-level product is their, you know, premier $97 a year membership. Right. And so, you know, their business model I understand really well because on their homepage, you can go to their products and you can see they have a dozen different products that, you know, are from 1000 to $10,000 a piece. Yep. So I understand how the money works there for you. I'm like $97 a year, you know, if I were to do that with self-made man or something like that, I'm like, you know, where's the revenue come from and how much does it typically cost you guys to acquire a customer because it's probably about a hundred bucks, you know, on the average median. So yep. how do you handle that? Yeah. And so th that's exactly right. It, to acquire a customer for us, it's actually a little bit less than that. It's between 70 and $85, somewhere like that. But that's where, you know, we get, we sell other products into those subscribers. So even though you're a $97 a year customer with Revolution Golf, some of the perks that go along with that are being able to do other things with us at much less of a price. For instance, golf is in, golf is a space that we sell a lot of physical products with. And so when you're a $97 a year subscriber to Revolution Golf, 
you much like something like Amazon Prime, we will provide free shipping if you buy equipment with us. We also do things like we have live events or, or real, real actual physical golf schools. And some of those golf schools that we do all over the country, because you're an RG Plus member, you may pay, if you elect to go to those, you may pay $500 less for your ticket to that golf school because you're an RG Plus member. So, you know, for us, it's all about packing a tremendous amount of value into that $97 to really make it a no-brainer for people. And and those are the other ways that we find that we get much more from those $97 a year people than just $97 a year because we're putting offers in front of them. For instance, we might have a driver that is normally $497, but because you're an RG Plus member, you pay $397. So it's like there's so many more perks and so many, we still monetize those people. In other words, just because they're paying a yearly subscription, that doesn't mean we're not going to go to them with other really great offers. They just have to be offers of great value. And they find that is a huge perk to it. So, so many people get caught up okay, he's a continuity member. I have to then give him everything else for free. No, you don't. You just have have to give them great value in everything else that you promote to them. I mean, a continuity subscriber is actually just raising, the way we look at it is they're just somebody that's raising their hand and it says, we love what you do. Please put the, the best offers that you think would help me get better at the game of golf or help me in the golf travels that I like to do and put those in front of me and it'd be great if I could see some extra value out of that. And so that's really the way we look at it at Revolution Golf where so many other companies are saying there are, you know, we're going to pay you this and you're going to get sort of everything. While there are a lot of perks and extra video content and extra live events that we film for educational purposes in golf, we don't, we're not shy about still offering them to buy other things. And that's what I'm saying is they are the best of the best of the best, meaning when they go to buy other products from us. So have you found that there has been a particular marketing funnel or, or structure offer, uh, if you will, that works best for selling a continuity membership? Because I think, you know, I've watched you over the years. I've seen, mm-hmm. I've seen the capture page. I've seen the sales video. I've seen the long form, co- form copy. You know, if you were going to say, Mike, hey, if you're going to start this up for Self Made Man today, here's what I would do. What would what would that be? You know, what works best for us is is video sales and letters. And they, you know, there was a time that I think everybody who's been in this business for any length of time saw there was a time when the scrolling text video did really, really well. For us, it's really sort of me. It's all about bringing somebody into our funnel introducing them to Revolution Golf Plus, and then kind of sending out, you know, an invitation with a video for me explaining many of the perks to it. And that's where I see it the best, the the most, you know, where it converts the best is with, you know, having a sales funnel that brings people in the front door and then offers them Revolution Golf Plus. But we don't offer Revolution Golf Plus in the first few days, we want our, our big goal when somebody comes into the funnel is to create a bond with them, give them a bunch of free content, you know, make sure that they're that kind of person. We sort of pre-qualify them, if you will. And I think that's important too, to build a really big subscription business. To me, I think it's important that you either, that you bring people into your world, which is Revolution Golf, you show them what you're all about. You're about video content with the best instructors in the world. And then, you know, you show them these other offers. And then you say, hey, by the way, it's clear to us that you're into golf and a big way. And you'll probably be a perfect person for our continuity program. So we don't lead with continuity. And I think that's where a lot of people make mistakes is that they go out there and they lead with their continuity program. And that makes sense when you're Netflix or Hulu because the unique selling proposition is pretty darn simple. We're going to give you all these movies and all this stuff for one monthly fee. I mean, that's kind of simple. But when we're at Revolution Golf, 
you know, we're not the name of a Netflix. We're not a golf channel. We're not a Hulu. We're not a big name. So for us, we need to build some bond first. And I think that's really, really important to be able to do that prior to saying, hey, buy my continuity program sort of on the first when you when we first engage with that customer subscriber. And that's really been a big secret of ours. So what are you advertising? You know, when you're doing paid ads, let's say on Facebook or YouTube or whatever, Mm -hmm. and you're looking to recoup some of your cash flow back as soon as you possibly can, you know, what are you offering at that point? Anything or are you just going in the hole? We are. No. So great question. So here's what we do. We have a survey funnel technique that we've worked, you know, hard on for three or four years. And a lot of this goes back to what Ryan Levesque, I mean, we, we, we hired Ryan for probably over a year to really help us perfect the funnel aspect. And what we're doing there is we're sure it's all kind of a pre-qualifier. So we're spending the majority of our media spend, which can be 200 to 600,000 a month, uh, depending on the time of year. Golf has some seasonality to it. And that's why I say that. And what we're doing is we're, you know, using a survey funnel technique. We're bringing these people, these subscribers in. And then we offer them a digital product on the first day. So we offer them a product that goes specifically with the ad that they've clicked through. And we get about a five or six percent take rate on that, on that, for that person the day that they come in for a product. That is a small video product that's $17 currently is the one that's working. But we have an upsell path that we're averaging about $35 or $40 per customer. So what that enables us to do is capture between, is recouping 65 to 75% of that in daily investment. So we don't go a massive amount in the hole at Got Revolution it. Golf. Yeah. Or because, you know, no one in this space that we all work in, you know, if you do this and you're out there spending money on media, you know, you can spend a lot. And if you're not recovering a bunch of it very early, you're just going to run at a cash deficit, which is, which is really tough, right? So our goal, that's one of the metrics that we look at on a very daily basis, frankly, an hourly basis is how we're doing there. So, so let's that's talk- how we, that's our, that's, no, that's, you know, the main driver. I hope yeah. That answers no, great, yeah. great explanation. Huge, uh, yep. huge light on that. So let's talk about the tech that you guys use. Your primary site is definitely media focused, video focused. Is this yeah. something that y'all built from scratch? What are you using for your shopping cart, your, your email service provider, all of that stuff? Sure. I'm probably the worst person in the world to talk about this because like I have made, you want to talk about a guy who's made, continually made poor decisions on this and I can smile about it and and laugh about it. But literally, if I were to do this all again, I would do it much less custom than what we have done. We have spent an extraordinary amount building custom websites with custom players. We built our funnel from scratch. I know there's a lot of better sort of solves for that now uh, since, since we've been out there. So we've built a lot of our stuff. And I know there's, like, as just mentioned, there's a lot of other solutions for that. For uh, currently for our email provider is exact target. And that's just because of the size of our database. They're a commercial grade. I know there's a lot of other companies that have popped up recently. In fact, uh, some guys out of Austin have, you know, Marrow Post and some others that have seemed to be, uh, really good solutions. And, uh, Maybe if I was doing things differently at this point, I would go after some of those. But all of our stuff is sort of commercial grade. That said, if I was starting out, I don't think you need to go as commercial grade. When you start sending, you know, 60 million to 100 million emails a month, you know, you need to be on something where you're making sure your delivery rates are good and your ISPs are letting you in and things like that. And frankly, that's not something we've had a huge problem with because I think that the ISPs look at it as we are sending golf information. We're not trying to cure cancer or, you know, any of the stuff that might get you sort of in trouble with those guys. And so we're we're not scrutinized, I would say, to the point that maybe other businesses are. So it's not as big as a challenge as some of my friends who are in the nutrition space and things like that because of that. 
Correct. So, you know, that part of it, we are, we, we've built our, our funnels custom, our websites custom, our shopping cart. Literally, we are building a, we have just finished our second custom shopping cart. And all of those things have been expensive. They're probably, they're not the way I would say you would do if you were starting a business from scratch or otherwise. But I just wanted to be able to have the capacity for things like that. Yeah. I will say, one of the things that I encourage when you get into building your solution, there's a company out there that will help you. And I just, just drew a blank. It'll come to me in a minute that we <clears throat> that we use helps with subscription management because, you know, it used to be credit card processing for subscriptions was pretty easy even three or four years ago. But now there's so much fraud. There's so many other things that the average credit card for people in the U.S. is only like lasting three or four months. I mean, the people are canceling their cards. They're having to get replacements cards. That company is called Vendisha. And Vendisha is one that we work with that makes sure that, you know, if somebody's credit card does get canceled, that we get the new one without losing the subscription. How do you spell, a lot of big do you spell them? Vendisha. Let me look that up real quick while we're on here. Yeah, that is a huge piece to the puzzle here. Yeah, it's a, it's a massive piece, and it's only gotten bigger and bigger. I'll tell you what, I might need to. We'll add it to the show notes. We'll add it. We'll add it to the. Sh- I'll make sure it's added to the show notes, and I can even get you a contact there with Vendisha for people that are doing that, but. You know, you'll probably, you probably, they work with big companies, they work with people like Apple and Amazon and, and huge companies and people like ours as well. That way, you know, it, it's an account updater for credit cards, which is, which is massive because you can sit there and literally just tread water yeah. and work your tail off if you don't have a good uh, updater for credit cards because that is a huge challenge with big continuity businesses. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. So that's a great resource. You know, on your on your homepage, you guys are always putting up content. You have your experts, mm-hmm. and that's a really big key to this whole whole business model is the fact that it's not just enough they're doing all of the videos. Yes. And so, how did you make agreements with all of these instructors? If you wouldn't mind, kind of walking us through. Yeah. You know, so, a couple on. things. What I want to talk about is when people go to RevolutionGolf dot com. One of the things I kind of like about it is people probably look at it. And go, how do these guys make money? And I like that. I like, I want it to be sort of a media portal first and foremost. And I don't want to make, come across as just a straight sales site. Obviously, you can see a lot of our content. We do gate on our site that says for Revolution Golf Plus only members. But that, and that does very well. I mean, we add, you know, mo- lots of subscribers every day for people who want to, you know, get behind the paywall. But that is a big part of what we do. Sure, we have, you know, something that says shop up there, things like that. But we really want this to look like a a media, sort of a media website, not a sales site. And so I think that works really well for us. The next thing that is big for us is these actual view numbers are are real numbers. We're not timesing by that two or timesing it by three. And so you'll see, you know, a video that went live, you know, on Friday at Revolution Golf. When this is being recorded, I'm looking at it. It's got 123,430 views, and that's to completion. So that's not somebody just starting that. I mean, if mm. we wanted to put vanity numbers up there, we could, but it's just not something that I like to do. I don't. I don't, you know, if if I were if I were reporting on numbers of views that how many people pushed play and then jumped off of it, that number would probably be three or four times as large. We're only reporting people that are actually watched that particular video. That's a five and a half minute video. So that's so that's something. And then and then to get back to your question is, you know, we provide a big platform for these instructors to get a lot of views. And so what we do is we, with every single instruction, instructor that we bring on, we create a vi- multiple video products that we sell for them. And we do a revenue share with those pros on those products. So, but part of the deal is when you come on at Revolution Golf, we are going to pay for that production of that video. 
we're going to market it and we're going to sell it to through Revolution Golf. And they have zero cost involved in that. So when we sign a new guy up, all they have to do is give us their time, talent, and their expertise, and they're going to make, you know, a small percentage of the sales that we make in it. But the key, here's the key. They make zero money on our continuity. Continuity is all for Revolution Golf. So when we put their content into our con continuity program, they don't get paid on that. They just get paid on the video products that we sell to our customers, our RG Plus members, and, and so on and so forth. So you really got to protect your continuity program. So I say that to you personally and to anybody who's listening is really build your continuity program so you're the only one that's going to capture the, the revenue from that because there's going to be some day, hopefully, for a lot of people listening that they go to sell their business and that continuity biz business is straight revenue stream, which is really attractive for a sales price. Well, so, you know, let's talk about that for a second. Sure. If, if you have 100,000 members, you know, annual yep. membership members at $97 a year, that's basically sure. $10 million a year in recurring revenue. And so even if you go in the hole on that year one, you don't make a diamond profit. That's a $10 million, million a year residual income waiting for you in year two, you know, I, or yep. whatever the, the, you know, 90% stick rate, whatever that's going to be. Yeah. So about 70% stick rate, by the way. Okay, cool. Yep. So from a business perspective, mm -hmm. if you are going to build a company like this to st sell one day, if you could tell people where is the value derived from as far as your business goes? Is it in the visitors? Is it in the number of views? It is, is it in the continuity? Is it in the retail product you sell? Like, Where's yeah. the value? The value in a business like this, in this day and time, is 100% in the content that you have in your, and your continuity program. People, when, they, when they're in this marketplace today, it used to be about eyeballs and, and page views and things like that. I'm here to tell you that has shifted tremendously. Sure, there is value in that, but it, it pales in comparison to the value in your continuity membership program, how many people are paying you an annual fee for the continuity you have. Big companies, big media companies, will discount. They, they don't want to pay for eyeballs, they, meaning just site visitors anymore. They don't even really want to give you any substantial multiple on product sales that you do is what I've found. Where they really want is they want the, con they want the subscription fee continuity money. And that's where all of the value is in these businesses. What I'm, not, kind of I'm not saying that commerce doesn't have it. I'm not saying there isn't money in the commerce side of it, but the real money is in it. And let me just give you an example on something like that. We all know about Amazon.com, right? Huge, one, if not the most incredible business story, one of them in the last 20 years. I mean, I was actually just reading an article over the weekend about Bezos and his original investors and the guy's all of them got outs at some point, but the original guys that gave him fifty thousand dollars each, they would that investment would have made a seventy thousand dollar return. Seventy thousand percent percent. Seventy thousand percent return. Yeah, it'd be worth like three billion dollars each. But look at look at Amazon.com. I mean, I think you know their market cap is massive, but what they've built is the Prime service. It is really at the heart of things, what they look at is the most valuable part of their business. Other than, I want to be very clear, their cloud service has become a massive business for them as well, but that's really a continuity business in itself too. Where they actually almost lose money or they don't look great to the Wall Street guys is the commerce. You know, the commerce is just sort of a tool that they have to create their Amazon Prime service and their cloud-based service and things like that. And so I just tell people to, you know, if you're building a business nowadays for something to sell, I would really think about the continuity, just be focused on how great can you build your continuity business 
and get as many subscribers as possible because I believe in the next 10 years, those are the numbers that are going to be looked at. And what would you say is typical? What do you typically see being offered out there for continuity business from, uh, on a multiples perspective? You know, that's where it's interesting. I think if you have a good continuity business, I've seen, depending on the market space, I've seen it anywhere from 10 to as high as a 15 times multiple with a continuity subscription business. Whereas if you have a straight sort of commerce business, you may get a three to five. I mean, if you're really good, you might get a five X, but I'm, I'd probably say it's much more like a three, three X, um, tight business. So the guys that are, you know, the people that are selling their businesses for, for a bunch of dough are the ones that have a revenue, a, a reoccurring revenue. And, and it's often that it's a, that a 10 X multiple. It just depends on the, it depends on the market too. It depends on several other things. But I've seen I've seen quite a few transactions in the 10x side of things. That's awesome. What would yeah. you say? You know, we've got about 10 minutes left. What would you say sure. have been some of the biggest mistakes that you've made that you know you would do differently this time? For sure. One of them we touched on. Like I, I just think you should, and that is sort of getting in the software building business, is which which I've. And I think a lot of my friends I've done I've done it too. We had our yep. own proprietary cart and it was yep. it was you know a million dollars a year roughly in dev cost. It's yeah. it's like that and there's so much, you know, stuff out there that is over the count that you know that's software out of the box that will work just as well and those people are focused that is their focus on the business. It can be such a massive distraction trying to get in. I have, I had no interest whatsoever in ever getting in the software development business. In fact, I'm probably the worst kind of person to be in that business. And it's, that was, um, it has been a major sort of time suck, resource suck and expense suck. So I would just say, you know, outsource that kind of stuff the, the best you possibly can. That, that's number one. Number two is, is just watch your costs. I mean, you know, when you start to build a business and as it becomes more and more profitable, we all can get a little fat, dumb, and happy. Even someone like myself that really, really was super bootstrappy at the beginning of building the business, when the revenue became to, started to come bigger and the cash flow became bigger, it's easy, super easy to start taking on these little incremental costs of things that you might justify to make your life or make business easier. And all of a sudden, you can be look at your business one day and go, holy smokes. In fact, at Revolution Golf, this year, I had one of those moments where it was April of this year, we're getting ready to go into the golf season. And I did a deep dive for several days on absolutely every single cost with my team that we had. And within 30 days, I was able to rip $300,000 a month. And some of those were people resources. And not all of them were like, but some of them were people, some of them were tech and things like that, that we had just added over the years that just add up at the end of the day. And I think that's part of running a, a business. And part of the challenges of growth is you can have cash flow and you can start bringing on these these sort of costs or people or whatever. And at the end of the day, you know, we have sort of a thing that we talk about here and it's like cut fat until you cut muscle. And then once you cut muscle, then reevaluate. In other words, cut some of those costs out until it, till it hurts. And then once you see it hurt, then, then you can sort of add some back in, but you will be amazed. And when you start growing a business that's, you know, and I'm talking about businesses that are, you know, $15 million plus is where you start sort of adding these costs on that really don't make any sense. Man, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, you know, again, for, for folks who are, have an opportunity to start a business like this in their niche, or maybe they have something similar from a, a marketing funnel perspective, you know, I'm trying to think about how, where to start. So if you mm -hmm. start a business based on a $97 year continuity, again, it doesn't, 
leave you any money for profit. Right. And so I'm wondering if you would recommend starting with a couple of static products at a higher dollar amount, or, or at least you have those when you launch your continuity. Because what I want to throw out there for folks, you know, I've taught this model when I did it a couple of years ago with Live Free and Prosper, where it was a dollar trial and then it was $47 a month and then it was four or, or $400 per year. And yeah. that model specifically was really important because that annual membership upsell, the 400 bucks, is what allowed me to cover the ad spend. And so mm-hmm. out of every, let's say, four people that that joined or at least took the trial, three of them would, would stay on, on monthly at 47 a month and one of them would take the annual. And yep. that annual would pay for the acquisition of those three monthlies. Sure. Um, but you've got to have that. So is there any anything that you'd recommend when it comes to making sure you you have a certain number of assets in place before you do something like this or yeah no i think you're exactly right about that i mean when you look at revolution golf we sold so many more video products i'll just call them dvds before we ever gotten in the continuity business because i think it's extremely important to build a customer list before you build a continuity list so you should squeeze an email create a customer then create a continuity person. Mm. And so to give you an example, in the golf space, you know, we might squeeze the email, then we're trying to sell them some kind of video product that could be from $17 to $57 and have some upsells in there and, and do whatever we can and cultivate that customer. And then take those customers are tremendously easier to turn into continuity members. So I just would not lead with a continuity, like for me and, and for, for our business. And when you, when you don't have some huge amount of startup capital, I think it's important to create customers first, then continuity members, as opposed to creating continuity members and then customers. Cause continuity business is awesome, but it's harder to create a continuity member than a customer. Interesting. That's, so. Yeah. You know, an idea, an idea for that might be, you know, for self-made man, we do one kind of premium lesson per month. Yep. So you're suggesting basically sell access to those lessons individually, let's say for 19 bucks. 100%. Got it. That's a, what I would do with your business, which I think is an awesome business and an awesome subscription is I would get all your experts and in each one of them, I would create small products with upsells in them. And I'd cre- start creating those customers first and foremost. And then once people are becoming customers, I would have self-made man plus or whatever that continuity. And that may include lots of the products and lots of other perks. But I would first and foremost create an education system where you're selling these lower price products and just building a massive customer list. That's what I would be doing with that business, with the business that you have, because there's so many people that would pay for great, you know, programs at this smaller amount of money and then give them a continuity on the backside of it. Yeah, even as an ups even as, you know, an upsell. Even even yeah. of course, even as an upsell, a hundred percent. Awesome, brother. Well, I think that's a yeah. that is a perfect end cap to to the interview today. And this went by super quick. <laughs> yeah, felt, that did go by fast. felt like it was about 30 minutes long. <laughs> so, totally. Oh, uh, well, well, thank you so much. This was awesome. And uh, where can people go to connect with you? Obviously, there's revolutiongolf.com. Yeah. Um, and, you know, they can connect with me there. You know, for your users, anybody who wants to send me a personal email, and I know there's a lot of people listening, I, I'm, I will still do my darndest to get back to you. I, I do that with all of our Revolution Golfers. Too. So that's Justin at revolutiongolf.com. And, and uh, anything, any way that I can answer a question, I can't promise a ton of time or a big long answer, but I'm happy to help any, anybody in, in that way, shape or form as well. So they can shoot me an email. And uh, again, Mike, I just want to thank you. I, I honestly, I honestly mean this. Uh, you are a big, big mentor of mine, somebody that I've enjoyed spending a ton of time with. And I will note uh, to your listeners that you and I uh, raced across the the Baja Peninsula in like, what was that, 2009-ish? Mm-hmm. Eight, maybe it was 2008, actually. Yep. I can't remember. Actually, I have a funny funny story about that. I um, well, And my point to that is, is I think you sort of got your bug for racing cars while we were in that, that car, those cars together for those few days. I, I absolutely remember sitting next to you and looking at you and going, 
you know what? I'm having a good time, but that but Mike's having a hell of a lot more fun than I am. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right no, I, I, uh, I knew there was a passion being burned, uh, being really really uh yeah well well we did that we did that at, at some point i think spring of 2008 and then six months later in the fall i was uh racing the baja 1000 that year exactly so yeah. you jumped in but i want to say something really you know that would be interesting because i look at this all the time so mike and i went on this maverick trip in two, spring of 2008 part of this deal that came with like the package was a journal that you got a leather bound journal you may have yours you may not have yours and I remember, Mike, going to Cabo St. Lucas. I flew out of South Carolina. I got there a day early. And I went down and literally sat on the beach with that journal. And I started writing about Revolution Golf, about what my goals would be. And at that time, I wrote in my journal that I would, I would love to build a golf business that did $2,000 a day in revenue, which would be $60,000 a month or $600,000, you know, $720,000 a year. I still have this journal. In fact, it, may, it it's in a box sitting on my coffee table in New York City in my apartment. And uh, I just look at it often because I think it's kind of funny that that was sort of my goal at the time. And almost, you know, most days we do far more than $60,000 in revenue for the day. And that was my goal for a monthly revenue. And I've, you know, I've had certain days that came close to six hundred thousand dollars, which was the, you know, or seven hundred thousand, which is the yearly uh, hopes uh, at that time. So, you know, pretty interesting. I, I keep that journal; it goes everywhere with me. I look at it from time to time, and I think about that that's trip cool. that we went on. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome, brother. And and uh, you know, one of the biggest pieces to to your success is that you have been building and improving the same business for, you know, roughly six, seven years now, yeah. um, you know, if not longer since, you know, 08 really. And that's one of the biggest pieces that I think most people overlook is they just don't have the patience to stick with the same thing that long. <laughs> yeah, no, you're, you know what? And let me add one more thing to that because I would like the listeners to hear that, that you're, I appreciate you for picking that up on that. And that has been one of the secrets to the success that we have had at Revolution Golf is we've been solely focused on that and really haven't jumped around that much. In fact, I went to a meeting very early on when I moved to New York City. It was in 2011 with a guy here who uh, has a private equity company. They've invested in some of the biggest, biggest success stories on the internet. I mean, they're their track record is phenomenal. And I went to a meeting with him. And because I was thinking about, you know, creating, uh, raising some capital at that time. And he was like, Justin, unbelievable story, unbelievable company. But for someone like us to get really involved in that, I'd like you to consider sort of starting a revolution golf and with in fishing and in tennis and in all these other sort of hobby sports and things like that. And he said, you know what? I could get behind that. I could, I could, I could, you know, write you a big check for something like that. And it was a hard decision. It was a massively hard decision. And I was like, you know what? At that time, I was like, I don't love fishing. I don't love tennis. I don't love anything else. And I know me, I got to stay hyper focused on one thing. Cause if I get distracted in a lot of other ways, I will take a great business and turn it into a bunch of very mediocre, if not bad businesses. And that is what you bring up there is very true. And I literally had, you know, I had that temptation at one point, which would have been very, very easy to go. All right, let's, you know, let's go build this sort of thing and all these other sports and golf and all this other thing. And I bet you that we would not have been as successful with that. So I appreciate that observation and I truly believe that is one of the uh, the things that really has helped us along the way. Absolutely, brother. Yeah. Well, man, thank you so much for the time today. This was awesome. Guys, yeah, go man. check out uh, revolutiongolf.com. If you're a golf fan, obviously, and if you're not, just go join and check it out and study it from a business perspective. You know, one of the things that, that I've done is, uh, and, I, and I tend to do this whenever I find someone who has a really successful business, is I'll fire up ScreenFlow. And, uh, and I'll go through and, and buy, you know, the products and the upsells and, and save that, that journey so I can go back and study all the pages and the sales materials. 
And uh, this is an unbelievably successful business. So, you know, there's there's a lot to be learned uh, by doing so. So, man, thank you so much for the time, Justin. Really appreciate Anytime, it. Anytime, man. Looking forward to seeing you in, in New York soon. And uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll chat again. And also, real quick, yeah. we will put the... Uh, website for that credit card renewal company in the show notes. So go to MikeDiller.com forward slash blog. Look for Justin's episode. And uh, we'll make sure we put that resource in there for you guys here when we find it uh, in just a little bit. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll see you next week. Take care.